Eric J. Legrand is a retired American football defensive tackle who played college football at Rutgers. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers signed him to a symbolic contract as an undrafted free agent in May 2012. He became paralyzed while making a tackle in an October 2010 game, but has since regained movement in his shoulders and sensation throughout his body. College In 2008, as a true freshman, Legrand made his collegiate debut against the North Carolina Tar Heels on September 11. He saw action at fullback and on special teams. He played in the final 12 games of the season, contributing two tackles and his first career tackle for loss in his third career game versus Morgan State on September 27. Legrand found playing time against West Virginia on October 4, and saw action as fullback against Connecticut on October 18 as well as Pittsburgh on October 25. At this point of his collegiate career he was number 46, but had to switch to number 52 to play defensive end for the Syracuse game on November 8 where he assisted in a huge defensive stop, and followed up with a career-high four tackles against Louisville on December 4. By 2009, Coach Iano, ex-head coach of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, decided to channel Legrand's strength and speed at a new position, defensive lineman. Legrand earned himself the backup defensive tackle position to Charlie Noonan, but he managed to appear in all 13 games that season, racking up 33 tackles. Iano saw him as a multi-purpose player, and Legrand proved himself to be with 13 tackles on kickoff coverage in his sophomore season. Legrand recorded a tackle for loss in seven games and played 11 games where he had multiple sacks. He went on to tie his career-high four tackles against the Maryland Terps. Legrand added three solo tackles, including a TFL versus West Virginia on December 5 and at Syracuse on November 21. Eric posted three tackles versus the University of South Florida Bulls on November 12 and matched his career-high four tackles and had 1.5 tackles for loss along with a fumble recovery versus Pittsburgh on October 16 and three tackles and an assisted tackle for loss versus Howard on September 12, 2010 proved to be a year that would change Eric Legrand's junior season at Rutgers and his life, permanently. Legrand proved to be a crucial performer at the defensive tackle. He played in only six games before suffering a career-ending spinal cord injury on October 16 in a game against the Army Black Knights at MetLife Stadium. The injury occurred during a collision with Army's kickoff returner, Malcolm Brown, ending the defensive tackle season with 13 tackles including two sacks. He had his season-high three tackles and a tackle for loss against Tulane on October 2. On September 2 versus Norfolk State, Legrand proved useful to the team defense. Posting up a pair of tackles including a tackle for loss and a fumble recovery. He added two tackles at FIU on September 11, and assisted on a sack against North Carolina on September 25. Injury On October 19, 2010, Legrand suffered a severe spinal injury during a game against the Army Black Knights in East Rutherford, New Jersey MetLife Stadium home to both the New York Giants and the New York Jets. On a kickoff to Army, Legrand collided with the ball carrier, Malcolm Brown. Legrand was credited with a tackle, but he lay on the ground for several minutes before being carted off, apparently only able to move his head. As the gurney rolled off the field at MetLife Stadium, Legrand tried to force a thumbs up to the crowd, such as Mike Utley, of the Detroit Lions, to tell them that he was all right. Utley was an offensive lineman with the Detroit Lions, where in his third season as starting right guard suffered an injury to his sixth and seventh vertebrae, making him a quadriplegic. Utley served to be one of Legrand's inspirations in that he is now a functioning paraplegic with use of his upper body. Legrand was unable to perform the gesture, saying it felt like a thousand pounds. He was taken to the intensive care unit of the Hackensack University Medical Center, in Hackensack, New Jersey, where doctors determined that Legrand was paralyzed from the neck down. He fractured his C3 and C4 cervical vertebrae. About two weeks later, he was transferred to Kessler Institute for Rehabilitation, one of the nation's leaders in spinal cord rehabilitation. Legrand was put on a respirator right away to help him breathe 
and doctors informed his mother that he would more than likely need the aid of the machine to continue breathing for the rest of his life. Doctors also informed Karen Legrand that her son had a suspected 0-0-5% chance of walking for the rest of his life. The next day when Legrand woke up, he managed to mouth the words, I'll be back, to his mother. Recovery, Legrand wanted to breathe at his own pace, and stated, It's not even whether you keep breathing, it's whether you keep breathing how you want to breathe. A month later Legrand had lasted an hour and a half off of his ventilator. Legrand proceeded to practice breathing without the use of medical equipment, and was independently breathing by Thanksgiving. Coach Greg Iano would visit Legrand frequently, and is said to have truly embraced the entire family as his own, and would repeatedly relieve Erica Euro unregistered trademark S mother from taking care of him without hesitation. On January 6, 2011, Rutgers announced that Legrand had regained movement in his shoulders and sensation throughout his body. On October 29, Eric Legrand returned to High Point Solution Stadium, arm in arm with his teammates for a Rutgers home game against West Virginia during a snowstorm. Legrand's return to High Point Solution Stadium was said to be the most indelible moment of the year and was the awarded Sports Illustrated's Fans' Choice Best Moment of 2011. By summer 2011, Legrand took his story more public by posting pictures of himself on his Twitter account, in July, standing straight up, with the help of a specialized metal frame and announcing that he was slowly regaining movement and sensation in his arms. Overnight, Legrand gained 12,000 new followers. In 2012, thinking his story was fairly well known, Legrand jokingly sent a tweet to Lolo Jones, challenging her to a race. All she knew of him was that he was a former football player and responded that, as a track star, she would win convincingly. When she was made aware of her unintended insult, she issued an apology for her insensitive response which was accepted by Legrand. On May 14, 2014, she and Legrand participated in a race called the Wings for Life World Run, held around the world, with proceeds going towards funding dedicated to spinal cord injury research. A fund named Believe has been set up by the Rutgers Scarlet Knight family with proceeds going to Eric Legrand and his family. The Believe Foundation has raised proceeds through selling sporting apparel stitched with Legrand's name and number as well as hosting numerous sporting events in Legrand's honor. Professional career, Legrand resumed his studies via Skype for the spring 2011 semester and made multiple appearances at spring football practices. At the Scarlet White Spring Game, he expressed his aspiration of becoming a sports broadcaster, and he has continued to become an inspirational speaker nationwide. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers symbolically signed Legrand on May 2, 2012. The Buccaneers were coached by Greg Iano, who was the Rutgers head coach during Legrand's playing career. Iano agreed to become the head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on January 26, 2012. Legrand officially announced his retirement from football on July 26, 2012 to free up a roster spot for the team. Since the beginning of the 2012 NFL season the rules towards kickoffs have changed, and from now on kickoffs will take place from the 35-yard line, instead of the 30-yard line, in hopes of reducing the number of injuries. Legrand's opinion on the rule change is clear. He believes that the rule should return to its previous incarnation, and argues that many football players can make a career out of playing on special teams and that the new system deprives teams and players of some of the thrill and excitement of the game. The Subway sandwich chain has added Legrand to their roster of star athlete promoters. The Associated Press reported that Legrand, alongside Justin Tuck of the Oakland Raiders will appear in commercials together throughout the 2012 season. Legrand joined a team of Subway-sponsored athletes including Olympic gold medalists Michael Phelps and Apollo Anton Ono. Tom Pace of Subway Yar Euro Unregistered Trademark S Marketing Office stated that, We believe his inspirational story resonates with our fans. All of our athletes who know Eric are already rooting for him. Like us, they love his character, determination and positive outlook. Honors and awards, in June 2012, Legrand was presented the Unsung Hero Award by the New Jersey Hall of Fame. 
he was presented the Jimmy V Award for Perseverance at the 20th Annual Espies on July 11, 2012. During his speech, he announced that he would someday walk again. The Jimmy V Award recognizes Legrand for overcoming great obstacles through physical perseverance and determination, and for living by the Jimmy V Don't Ever Give Up. Motto Legrand is a living epithet of the award a Euro unregistered trademark S motto and proves to be a worthy addition to the men and women who have previously received the award. That group includes NCAA wrestling champion, Anthony Robles, who was born with only a right leg. Northern State coach Don Mayer, who beat cancer and devastating injuries from a car crash and went on to set the men's college basketball record for most career victories. And Kevin Everett, the former Buffalo Bills tight end who suffered an injury similar to Legrand's in a 2007 game. In August 2012, Legrand was named the most influential person in New Jersey sports by the Star Ledger. The Eric Legrand Patriot Saint Foundation is dedicated to helping those with spinal cord injuries. Nike presented their Eric Legrand Foundation game jersey for Tampa Bay fans who want to show their support and spirit for Eric Legrand on his long road to recovery. All of the proceeds of Eric Legrand's number 52 jersey which are on sale in the team shop go to this foundation. His jersey will remain on sale regardless of Legrand's team status, for now, Legrand's role is to provide inspiration for his teammates and others. The Rutgers Division of Intercollegiate Athletics announced the establishment of the Eric Legrand Belief Fund to support Eric Legrand and his family. The Belief Fund's goal was is to raise money to support the paralyzed player as he undergoes medical treatment for the injury he suffered against Army. The money will be used as the Legrand family sees fit. On July 30, 2013, it was announced that Rutgers will be retiring the number 52 jersey worn by Legrand. The ceremony occurred on September 14, 2013, at halftime of the Rutgers Eastern Michigan game. It was the first number to be retired by Rutgers in the 144-year history of their program. On May 18, 2014, Legrand received a degree in labor relations from Rutgers and was asked to speak to his fellow graduates at Rutgers Spring Commencement Exercises. Books, in both Believe, The Victorious Story of Eric Legrand and Believe, My Faith and the Tackle That Changed My Life, Eric tells the story of how he is rebuilding his life continuing his education, and pursuing a career in sports broadcasting. The book was published by HarperCollins in September 2012. Family, Legrand's mother is Karen Legrand, and he has a sister named Nicole Legrand Harrigan. Eric's father, Donnie McLeod, lives in an adjacent town and plays a role in his therapy. See also, 2010 Rutgers Scarlet Knights football team, Adam Talia Farrow, Kevin Everett, Devin Walker, references. External links, Eric Legrand on Twitter.